Tom Paragodot, President and CEO of Apollo Silver Corp. Apollo is a U.S. Uh, silver play uh, advancing the uh, Calico resource in San Bernardino County, California. Hey, Matt, how are you? I'm really good. I'm really good. You're at the Beef Creek uh, Conference. Got a bunch of meetings lined up, and we'll hear all about that in a second. But um, you know, just looking at the broadly at the precious metal markets, um, I can't quite make sense of it. It kind of feels like no one's interested in silver anymore. Is that true? Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know if that's necessarily true. I think that what silver's caught up in is part of the broad uh, uh, market sell-off, and precious metals have not been uh, immune to that. Uh, and I, you know, I would remind you, uh, Matt, that um, you know, if you want to look at gold and silver, you know, bear in mind about seventy percent of the of, of production of silver right now goes into uh, industrial type purposes. And as the world starts to look at, uh, you know, decarbonization and the uh, the 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 contribution that uh, that solar can make to that, I think demand for silver is only going to go up. I don't know that the same can be said for some of the other precious metals. Right. Well, I I I, I don't I don't want to see you um, fighting with your with your cousin um, gold here, um, but. You're saying that because silver has some kind of utility, perhaps it should be doing better, but it, it, it's not. Gold's not. Um, it is risk off. I get it. But if, if I if I hark back to my banking days, all of the usual signs which signify that gold should be at a much higher price, they're just not working anymore. So you know, what's the timing in all of this? You, you know, look at Matt. Um, that's a very good question because as 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 you just pointed out, the the timing. This should be a perfect storm for precious metals. You got war in you've got war in Europe. You've got um, uh, inflation that we haven't seen in in decades. Interest rates are on the climb. This should be the perfect storm, and yet that relationship is broken. So trying to predict the timing on this gets a little bit trickier. But I will say, from a silver again, from a silver perspective, when you see some of the legislation that, uh, for example, Biden has brought in, there's going to be a big push. Um, uh, in, in, into some of these decarbonization type technologies, and that can only bode well for uh, silver moving forward. Well, okay, so you, you, you're, you're, you are hitching up to the um, the, the green train um, with silver because it has that that has that kind of utility there. I mean, even even some of the commodity prices there have kind of taken a hit uh, recently. So again, I, I do appreciate it's a difficult market. Your chart doesn't look too much too dissimilar to to many many others in the same. Um, but, but this this green economy that we're moving forward with, how is how does your project benefit from that? Obviously, being U.S. in the U.S. is and this is we're talking you, you quoting Biden there and his administration are putting uh, money up and or reducing red tape. They claim um, to make all of this happen. Is that is that actually trickling down to um, exp well? I, I, would you call, it, call yourself a developer? Um, like yourself? Uh, not yet. Right. Right. Let's be honest. Not yet. I mean, look at the chart of Pan, uh, Pan American. It hasn't trickled down to the producers yet, Matt. So it'll take some time to get down to us. But you, you started to ask a, 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 what I thought was an interesting question and how might Calico and our project benefit from some of this. And I, I think one of the things we're going to start to see more of, Matt, is people really starting to focus a bit more on where some of their inputs are into their green technologies. Uh, you know, and, and that starts to then speak to carbon intensity per unit of production, whatever it may be. And I just, you know, in, in California, they've got one of the highest amounts of renewable energy into their grid anywhere in, in North America. That bodes very well for us. We're less than six kilometers away from one of the largest uh, uh, new uh, solar installations in, uh, in that part of the world. You know, so we've got a lot going that I think differentiates Calico from some of those other uh, uh, silver uh, developers uh, and, 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 and new projects that are out there. Made in the USA as well. Made in the USA with, with, with renewable power. Right. Okay. These I, I kind of I slightly I slightly jazz because you've got a whole bunch of um, silver exploration and development companies down in Mexico look, looking up at you um, and. Um, you know, trying to differentiate themselves as well. You know, there's a, there's a lot of silver stories out there. So, do you think little things like that do actually make a difference to you? Because you you, you kind of suffered from a little bit of the hey, this whole kind of Californian thing. And we, I know you're going to talk about San Bernardino. You have to pronounce it for San Bernardino County. 
Bernardino, I, I just tongue twister for me, Bernardino County, you know, as being, you know, set, sets itself apart, you, you, you tell me. So um, are, they, are, these, are these sort of little uh, moments, these little kind of comments from governments, these, um, you know, these, these, these green budgets, green incentives, you know, eventually going to set you apart. I do believe they are, uh, and, but I do believe that we need to continue to, to 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 tell the story. But I do believe that there are new investors out there. There's a lot of people coming to this sector that are new to the sector that are really coming at it from a with a, a with a green perspective, and they're starting to understand the importance of some of these critical metals into their vision of a decarbonized uh, uh, world. And it's those new investors that really that, that this story starts to resonate with. Right. Okay. So where are you at the moment? Because I'm doing some studies. You've kind of started in the network component, and you're going to have to. Well, you, you promised to deliver uh, a revised uh, resource estimate as well. So maybe the first of those study wise, what, what, what's happening? Are you able to move forward with that? Yeah. Look, absolutely. So we we completed uh, five thousand meters of drilling in the first phase, and. We've got one more uh, batch of assays to come out uh, from that. That th those those uh, results will be imminent. That'll be the uh, the first 44, I believe, first first 44 holes of the program. Second phase of the drilling starts um, in September. We've held them back because of some of the heat wave. Uh, you know, some of the temperatures you heard have been fairly high. So we put a we we kind of slowed them down by about a week. But they'll should drill should start turning in September. That'll give us what we need to get that revised resource estimate out uh, early uh, 2023. I'm thinking, you know, sort of mid to late January, we should be in a position uh, to put that out to the uh, out to the market. In the meantime, as you point out, met work is well underway, and I expect sort of October, November, we'll start to see some of the results from that. Both of those streams then feed into the engineering studies that we'll uh, want to get underway in uh, in 2023. Right, so the, the network's really, really important moment. Well, cl clearly uh, revised um, resource uh, estimate is, is, is important, but the network is super important given the nature of the ore body, the nature of the grades that you have. You need to be super, super efficient. Um, so can you give us a sense of what it is that you're trying to test for and what a good outcome looks like on the network? Well, look, sure. Just let me, I'll, I'll, I'll step back and just remind everybody, historically, when a Sarco uh, had the project. Um, they did a bunch of met work back in the uh, late 70s, early 80s. And their silver recoveries range from 45 up to in the neighborhood of 85 to 90, depending percent, depending on, you know, obviously what they were doing. It. So what we're trying to do is trying to a try and see w if w we can uh, initially just replicate that work. But then second, what other techniques have been developed since those times that might be applicable? And one of the things we're trying is uh, uh, high pressure grind rollers, so HPGR technology, which has been incorporated very effectively by Coor at the Rochester uh, operation. Uh, it, it, it upped their silver recoveries uh, uh, as they report by about 20%. So uh, we, we're, we're testing that. We're also testing some additional, you know, te uh, uh, techniques that um, we'll, we'll see. It, it, you know, again, it'll be a balance between the increase, the improved silver versus how much is it costing us to get there. Right. Okay. And in, in, in a high in a high cost high energy cost environment, you know, some of the, some of these techniques will do better than others, I, I suspect. And uh, you'll you'll be looking very closely at uh, not just CapEx costs, but energy costs specifically for, for you know, making decisions. And it's, you know, you're right, it's energy costs and, and it's how much energy per unit of production, because as I said before, these things are going to start. These to things are going to really start to matter. But I, I want to come back to the efficiency component, because look, I, I have to have this conversation with CEOs um, when we're talking about nickel when we're talking about e e even gold projects um copper projects when when they're not these super super high grades um people wonder if these things could ever be economic so can you kind of re can you reference or um give us some peers that people could look to say i'm saying well it does work at, at these levels, but um, you know, and, and but they, they come at it in slightly different ways. But it is is not something where where you know eagles fear, fear to tread, as it were. Look, look, the, the the type the type deposit I would point to is is is, is Coors Rochester 
uh, deposit where they were mining, you know, material that was sort of grading somewhere between kind of 16, maybe up to 25 grams per ton, which is under our cutoff. We use the 50 gram per ton cutoff. Um, the, if you want to think broadly, what does this kind of look like? This isn't one of those high grade silver deposits that you talked about in Mexico where uh, structurally controlled, narrow, very high grade type material, okay? This is broad. If you want to think about it and think about a Nevada gold opportunity, right? It's lower grade, but bulk mineable. And that's the big difference we have. Our, our actual cost to move material will be in the lower quartile of that, I'm quite confident. It's a very simple open uh, open pit type operation, and we're on a hill, a hill slope, so it's it's more about terracing. So those costs should be very, very, very competitive uh, when it comes to those types of operations in Mexico, uh, where you're underground and you're chasing narrow veins, and you're having to spend a lot of money on sustaining capital to keep that operation. In, uh, afloat. Yeah, the, yeah, it's something that we kind of cover off on on, on the private investment platform. We're just trying to. You know, the types of grades you need to be able to do underground chasing high grade veins or you know whether, whether block caving or uh, open pit you know every, every everything has its own nuance um cost structure and, and and margin so for something like yours the efficiency of moving or processing or into a cost and right rising cost environment like this and a kind of low silver environment like this it's i guess every day must be sort of t testing your will uh to to, to to some degree um so you know, how quickly do you move and we've seen we've seen ceos say well look we've just put up pfs the market shrugged its shoulders and looked the other way didn't care so tell you what we're going to stop drilling we're going to stop working on anything other than desktop uh because that makes sense um, you know, and that's that's probably you know some of the CEOs were a little bit more cash constrained. You've got access to, you've got cash, you've got access to cash. You've got a really strong um, uh, investor register at the moment, shareholder register with um, institutions in there. What's the what's the route that you're choosing? Our, look, our route is to carry on doing what we said we were going to do. Uh, which is to get that revised resource estimate out and, and, and get engineering studies underway. And at the point of time where we've delivered on those objectives, then there'll have be a conversation internally and obviously with our other key stakeholders. And we'll have a look at what the environment is at the time and see what we want to do. But, you know, it's a catch-22 because if you wait for high, high prices, commodity prices, inevitably, okay, great, you'll start construction. By the time you finish construction and commissioning, guess what? They've moved. <laughs> Where'd they right? go? Yeah. So, it's, 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 it's hard to call. It's you hard know, to call, it, it, it is hard to call. And, and trying to make that call without a couple of key blocks in place, A, you know, that, that, that how much measured and indicated uh, silver are we talking about here? And B, what are we going to look to permit? What does this 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 what does a development of calico look like um, from a capital perspective from an opex perspective and at that point you've got enough information to really make a a, a much better um, uh, plan uh, to move to move forward right and so in, in terms of trying to understand the economics going forward, so we get it so it, it, it's a it's a it's about highly efficient earth moving exercise um, there are many of the examples of that around, around the world. So that, I think that holds no fear or should hold no fear for people. Um, you guys are going through these, these tests at the moment. And again, for instance, so at what point after the network, well, when is the network, network going to be complete? And at what point do you start to understand, better understand, even internally, the, the economics around this? Because, it, you know, the, the cost of fuel seems to be coming down, the, but that's, that's a... This week, um, the the cost of acid and reagents and, and all those they seem to be on their way back down. Uh, inflation seems to be. I think people are a bit tired of being frightened and a bit tired of being told to be frightened. Um, and I think they're pushing back on some of the price gouging in the market. So ho hopefully we see a bit more of that. But the the, ti the timing of all of this is really really important. So I imagine you're discussing this daily, weekly, etc. So. How do, you, how do you see the next, well, between now and Christmas, panning out um, for you in terms of decision making around the the economics or guidance you may be able to give the market? Uh, look, you, as you point out, I think the uh, the, the the Met studies are going to play a key role in that. Uh, you know, 
uh, operating costs in an open pit environment are fairly well understood between a couple of N members, and we can we can you know pick a median cost. We can look at we can look at Rochester and acknowledge that Coors been at it for a number of years, and we can you know maybe we won't be quite as efficient as those guys are, etc. So uh, it is going to be them at work, and as I said, late October, November, I think was. We'll, we, we, is is what we're expecting to see the 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 results out of this first phase of met work and that's then going to give us you know a, a, enough to put uh, i think pencil to paper uh to to to, to really understand um where, where we may be at um in a in a in in a preliminary economic assessment or or pre-fees type activities obviously since the middle of last year yeah, you've been been on been on a rundown. I don't think necessarily it's unusual. Just, that, but I'm, I'm pointing out the the obvious, as they say, pointing out the obvious. Does that give you a kind of free pass in a way, or are some of the meetings that you're about to have a question of uh, Cheryl or standing going, what the actual hell is going on here, and make make me feel good, or are they understanding of the process that you're going through, and they recognize recognize that you're you you are going through the motions that county and state level um, that you are going through the process technically uh, and that you the, the, there is a plan and it still makes sense. I mean, what, what are those conversations that you're, you're expecting to have? Well, and that we've already started yesterday. Um, I can say that the majority uh, are supportive of what we're doing, but they want to, they, there's also an acknowledgement that in a, a, a uh, a period of high commodity prices, all boats get floated. People tend to focus a little bit less on some of the risk side of the equation. They focus more on the tremendous upside that an opportunity may present. However, in the current environment, people do want to start talking more about economics, which leads to that conversation about metallurgical work and leads to a conversation around permitting uh, resource development in, in San Bernardino County. So there is those conversations, they're absolutely right. Um, <clears throat> the other remainder are, are okay. Uh, what are you going to do to get the share price back up? And and you know that that that's that's uh, uh, that's that's a tough one because I can, as I've said, I can only do what uh, I can do. I can control what I can control. Um, what we need to do is make sure that Calico and Apollo are positioned on people's radar, so that when the turnaround comes, which we all know it's going to come. That uh, we, you know, we're front and center on people's minds. Cycles are like that, aren't they? Cycles are like <laughs> that. Yes, okay. they tend to come back. Um, yeah. Okay. And, and so, are, are you paying any attention to? There's a lot of rhetoric in the market about price manipulation around gold, price manipulation around silver. Is is is, are that, is that just frustrated conversation, or is there any com component of, of truth? I mean, do your institutional shareholders? You know, um, are they are they buyers of that narrative? Not a one. Not a one of them have mentioned that. Um, I have some retail shareholders, however, that are, are they fall ten more towards the conspiracy side of the uh, coin, and and obviously get into that conversation. I I don't. I don't. You're not a subscriber. I'm not a subscriber. Not a subscriber. Right. So the important things are you in control of what you can control. Stick stick to the fundamentals. Because that that's what gets you out the other side, and you believe that you've got a point of differentiation from your your Mexican neighbors to to the south. Okay, well it sounds like a, a tough a tough three days. I kind of know how you feel uh, doing that many meetings each, each day is exhausting. So best of luck to you. Um, stay in touch. Let us know how you get on, uh, especially when this met work starts to kind of ro ro rotate through. I think that's pretty ex pretty exciting times. Cheers, Tom. Excellent. Thanks, Matt.